Aircraft carriers are one of the largest examples of naval force in the entire world. They're massive floating cities with the ability to carry airplanes into battlefields around the world. But how can these planes take off from such short runways, let alone land on ships in the middle of an ocean? The answer lies with the aircraft catapult system used by most aircraft carriers today. On land, planes utilize long runways to gain the speed needed for takeoff. However, on an aircraft carrier, the runways are much shorter, around 300 feet, compared to the 2300 feet needed for a normal aircraft to take off. Instead of distance, a catapult is used to give the plane enough speed for takeoff. The catapult system doesn't seem like much when you see it on the deck of a ship. It looks like a line of track with a connection to the front landing gear of the plane, but it's capable of accelerating the craft from 0 to 165 knots in less than two and a half seconds. That capability is only possible thanks to the impressive below decks engineering of the catapult system. Before an aircraft is launched, high pressure steam is collected in large accumulator tanks. This steam is siphoned off from the nuclear reactors aboard the ship and stored in pressurized tanks, which can be dangerous if malfunctions occur. Once the desired pressure of the accumulator tanks is reached, the valves are shut off and the catapult is ready to fire. But how exactly does a tank of steam cause a plane to accelerate at breakneck speeds? That's thanks to two pistons and a device that attaches to the airplane's landing gear, called a shuttle. Each catapult consists of two pistons that sit inside two long cylinders under the deck. The pistons each have a metal lug that protrudes through a gap in the flight deck where they attach to a small shuttle. This is the part of the catapult that will pull the aircraft across the deck at launch. The pistons will act like bullets when the steam is released. The plane is moved into place on the deck of the aircraft carrier and a tow bar on the plane's nose gear is connected to the shuttle. Another bar, called the holdback, is positioned between the back of the wheel and the shuttle. At the same time, the jet blast deflector is raised behind the plane. The pistons are initially locked into place so the cylinders can build up pressure. Once the correct pressure, the aircraft is fired up to full power, held in place by the holdback bar. When the pistons are released, the force also releases the holdback and the pressure of the steam rockets the shuttle and plane forward. When the plane reaches the end of the catapult, the tow bar pops out of the shuttle releasing the plane. During the launch, which takes around two seconds, the pilot of the aircraft experiences about four Gs of force, which is a lot, but nothing compared to what they experience during high-speed maneuvers in flight. After the launch, the catapult needs to be reset. The two pistons run into a braking system, which is essentially just two large cylinders of water. Once the pistons are stopped, a grabber comes up behind them and pulls the shuttle back into place, thus completing the full launch cycle. One launch cycle can be completed in under a minute, and most carriers have two or four catapults, meaning that a significant number of aircraft can be launched off the deck in very little time, thanks to these highly engineered aircraft catapults. The United States is currently investigating an alternative catapult launching system called the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System. But it has been a source of some controversy. While the new electromagnetic system will help decrease wear on certain parts and allow for larger aircraft to be launched from carriers, it's estimated that it has a far greater probability of catastrophic failure than its battle-tested steam counterpart. If this system were to be implemented on a future carrier, it would work in a similar fashion. Rather than utilizing steam pressure and pistons to move the aircraft along, linear induction motors would be used. Coupled with electromagnets, this system would push the sled along through strong magnetism, resulting in less stress on the aircraft and less expenditure of energy. 
The system can also go from a cold start to launch ready in about 15 minutes compared to hours for steam catapults and uses much less fresh water. Perhaps most importantly, the emails can launch pilotless drones, which are too heavy to be launched by steam. While it looks like steam is here to stay for catapult propulsion in the near future, the email system is already being installed on the new Ford class carriers and may represent the catapult propulsion system of the future.